Hi everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 7.2.10, Configuring DHCP Version 4. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Version 7 Cisco Networking Academy curriculum. So we did Enable and Config T, and now we're going to exclude the addresses with the IP DHCP. You'll notice that most of our DHCP commands start with IP DHCP if we're using DHCP for uh, IP version 4. Then excluded address and you put the starting and the ending address. Okay. IP DHCP excluded. I'm going to do a tab so it'll finish it out for me. And then I'm going to do my first address and it was 192.168.10.1. Then 192.168.10.10. Remember, if you do a question mark there, it'll tell you start and end for the starting and ending address. So I'm going to exclude the first 10 again. Excluded addresses 192.168.30.1. 192. Oops. 168.30.10. So that excludes the first 10 because again, you got to have a default gateway. So you got to exclude something. A lot of times with your home wireless routers and stuff, if you ever look at it, it actually excludes like the first uh, 99 addresses. It'll actually start at like 192.168.1.100, um, but that still gives you from 100 to .255 or 254, um, 154 more devices that you can use. So we'll do that and then IP DHCP pool R3-LAN, all uppercase. Then our network address this time is the 30.0.255.255.255.0. The default router is 192.168.30.1. And then the DNS server should be the same as the other network, the 20.254. All right, so we've excluded my addresses here, 30.1 to 30.10. We've set up again the 30.0 network with a slash 24 subnet mask. That means it'll span from 30.0 to 30.255. It will not use .0 and .255 because of being the network and broadcast. It will not use .1 through .10 because those are excluded or reserved. So that means it'll start at 30.11 when it starts assigning addresses. Okay. So we've got those two pools set up. Now it wants me to configure DHCP relay. We want to configure R1 and R3 as a DHCP relay agent. And the reason being is because we configure this stuff on R2, but R2 is not directly connected to these LANs, these local area networks on R1 and R3. So we want R1 and R3 to kind of be like a pass through a helper um, when it gets that information. Okay, so we got to tell it, hey, R2, I want you to pass my information um, through R1 to my LAN and same thing for R3. So to do that, you notice here we need a helper address. So we go into interface G00, which again, if you hover your mouse over these interfaces, all right, G00 is the one right here on R1, and we're going to configure it to be a helper address. So you notice 10.1.1.2. If you look at your address and table, 10.1.1.2 is this S000. What it's doing is saying, hey, if R2 sends me a request to S000, which is 10.1.1.2, I'm going to forward this over to G00. But I got to tell G00 to do that on R1. So that's why I go into interface G00 on R1. So I'm going to go to configuration mode, interface G00, and I'm going to do IP helper. address and then you notice it tells me what is my destination address all right so again it lets me know right here on g00 hey i need you to forward any request from s000 over to me same thing here let's check our interface for r3 it is g00 as well so right here on r3 we're going to set a helper address so we'll do interface g00 ip helper address and we're going to forward over from R2's 10.2.2.2 
So we want to contact here and say, hey, I need you to forward this over here. So we're going to do 10.2.2.2 for the helper address here. Now we want to make sure that our uh, PCs get the information correctly. So we need to go to PC1 and go to IP configuration. Before, we've always done it as static. If we just click this button, as long as we've got it configured correctly, voila. Now, if you notice it set, give you some information here, it'll be like 64 or 164 dot something. It'll say DHCP request unsuccessful. So even if you get some stuff here, always check to make sure it's right. So we get 192.168.10.11. Remember I mentioned that would be the first address because we excluded 10.1 through 10.10. You see the same subnet mask, you see the default gateway there and the DNS server, right? And when we go to PC2, we should be able to change it from static to DHCP. And voila, we have our addressing and again, it starts at 30.11. All right. And then lastly, but not least, we see how to get a DHCP address on a router's interface. So on R2 over here on G01, we have this shutdown between R2 and uh, the Internet cloud here. That's G01 right. That's G01 right here. OK, so. That one is actually getting an IP address through DHCP from somebody else on the Internet. So to do that, we would do interface G01. And instead of actually going through, normally we do IP add, whatever the IP address is, the subnet mask, no shut. We're going to do IP. And if you notice the options here, one of them is DHCP. Right here, IP address. And instead of the IP address is DHCP. Hit enter and then let's turn it on with no shutdown. All right, so let's make sure it actually got an IP address. When you do a show run, you'll also see our DHCP pools here. You see IP DHCP pools, what is excluded, what the network address is, subnet maths, the default gateway, DNS servers, all of that, what addresses are excluded or up here. And you'll notice again, G01, it says IP address DHCP. So it is not a static address. Um, and you see here, it also tells you at the bottom, it was assigned 209.165.200.231 from its neighbor. All right, now that gets us to 100% for our lab assignment.